This is a look at how the accounting equation integrates with financial statements. First, we'll look at several transactions and we'll also look at how those transactions affect the individual financial statements related to a sole proprietor. For a sole proprietor, we have an income statement, we have a statement of owner's equity, and we have a balance sheet. For owner's equity, for a sole proprietor, we begin with the beginning capital or capital that was invested prior to this statement date, any new investments by the owner during the period, net income from the business that will yield a subtotal from which we will take any owner's withdrawals and that will yield ending owner's capital. A sole proprietor is very much like a corporation in the fact that we have assets which are equal to liabilities and owner's equity. This the assets are on the left side of the accounting equation and it is the debit side of the accounting equation. These will typically be, everything on the left side of the equation will be debit based. Assets equal what we have. All of our debits equal all of our credits, so what we have on the left side of the balance sheet much equal what we have on the right side of the balance sheet, which are our liabilities, or what we owe, plus our owner's equity, what we own. So we will look at a variety of transactions and see how they integrate. In this instance, our first transaction, the owner invests in the business. This is the first month of operation. We can see over here in the statement of owner's equity, there's no beginning capital. So the owner invests in the business cash of $30,000. So that would be a debit to cash and a credit to capital. The capital will be reflected on the balance sheet as well as the statement of owner's equity. We can see that all of the assets will always be found on the balance sheet. Also, all liabilities will always be found on the balance sheet. So assets and liabilities will always only be on the balance sheet. That's the only financial statement where you will find them. Not so with owner's equity. We will find them on a variety of balance sheet. Capital or the ending capital, the individual components that make up capital, will both be on the balance sheet and will also be reflected on the statement of owner's equity. So let's look at our next transaction. Next, the owner is going to purchase some supplies which are going to yield future benefits. When the purchase of something yields future benefits, that's indicative of the fact that we have an asset. If the purchase of something only yields benefits for the current month, then it's considered an expense. But when it yields future benefits, it's going to be considered to be an asset. So in this instance, we purchased for cash some supplies, the amount of $2,500. Our assets went up by 2500 and also our cash went down by 2500 We can see that our cash, we originally had 30000 Now it has 27500 It's on the balance sheet. Our supplies are 2500 and our owner's capital is 30000 Now let's look at our next transaction. A purchase of equipment for cash. Obviously, this is going to benefit future periods. So our equipment will go up. Our cash will go down. We can see that our cash is now 1500 Supplies, 2500 And equipment is 26000 Next, we're going to purchase some supplies on credit. Again, related to future benefits. So supplies will be an asset. It will be on the balance sheet. And now we have a liability of accounts payable. It will also be on the balance sheet. So now we can see our supplies are 9600 Our accounts payable are 7100 Next, we are going to provide some services and our clients are going to pay for, pay for those services in cash. So we will receive the asset of cash in the amount of 4200 Now we've earned some revenue and so that's under owner's equity. So the financial statement associated with this owner's equity transaction will be the income statement. So now we have consulting revenue in the amount of 4200 We can see on the income statement consulting revenue forty. 200. 
we can see that um, it's affecting net income as a, the only transaction that's happened so far that related to in the income statement. So we can see that it's adding to the statement of owner's equity. And we can see now that it's influencing the ending owner's capital. Also, we can see that reflected too on the balance sheet. Next, we're going to pay some rent in cash, and it is only for the current month. So our cash is going to go down by $1,000, and also our owner's equity will go down by $1,000. This will be reflected on the income statement. Only revenue and expenses are the only thing that are on the income statement. So income statement is only going to have revenue and expenses, and assets and liabilities only wind up on the balance sheet. So we're beginning to get a clearer picture of what goes where when we look at individual transactions and where they wind up in relationship to the financial statements. We can see now we have a deduction of rent expense that's going to decrease our net income. Our net income is going to be reflected on the statement of owner's equity. It's going to affect our ending owner's capital. And also we can see the ending owner's capital is also affected on the balance sheet. Next, we're going to pay some salaries in cash. Cash is going to go down. The salary expense, well, um, the owner's equity will be decreased by the salary expense. It affects net income, net income on the statement of owner's equity, and also our ending owner's capital. We're going to provide some services to some clients, and they're going to pay, uh, not going to pay us. They're going to have a receivable. So we're going to do this for credit. So we'll have a receivable for these services. And also, this client also rented a portion of our business. And so also, we are going to have rental revenue related to this. So the entire receivable for both the consulting services we did and the rent is 1900 this is an asset an asset will only be found on the balance sheet here the balance sheet now we see accounts receivable of 1900 and we also see that it affected owners equity we have two revenues uh, two revenue streams we're going to consider one to be the consulting revenue to differentiate that from rental revenue so we can read on our financial statements what came what amount of our revenue came from consulting revenue and what amount came from rental revenue so the rental revenue will also be on our income statement and so now we see our consulting revenue in total increased our rental revenue our in net income change that's going to affect our statement of owners equity and the ending owners capital that will be found on the balance sheet Next, we are going to be paid from the client with the receivable, and so we're going to receive cash in the amount of $1,900, and accounts receivable will be decreased by $1,900. So now we see on our balance sheet, cash has gone up by $1,900, and our accounts receivable has gone down by $1,900. Payment on accounts payable, so now we're going to pay on this accounts payable that we incurred earlier, we're going to pay $900 of that, so that's going to decrease our cash and also decrease our accounts payable. These are liabilities, and so they will only be found on the balance sheet. So our accounts payable was $7,100, but since we paid down $900, now our accounts payable, the balance is $6,200. And now we're going to have a withdrawal of cash by the owner. Um, this will be a deduction of cash and also it will be a reduction of the, of the owner's equity. This, the withdrawals are only found on the statement of owner's equity. So withdrawals of 200 decreases owner's equity. So let's go back over the type of financial statements that are, are influenced by changes in owner's equity. Our ending capital balance will both be on the balance sheet and on the statement of owner's equity. Um, any income we derive from our business will be on the income statement. Expenses will be on the income statement. And any withdrawals will be on the statement of owner's equity. So again, revenue and expenses only on the income statement. 
The statement of owner's equity will have changes and in new investments by the owner, uh, beginning capital investments by the owner, what we have by way of net income, and withdrawals will only be found on the statement of owner's equity. So we can see as a result of all of these transactions that our net un income was 4400 Now let's look at the statement of owner's equity. We had no beginning capital. We had an investment, investment by the owner this month, the 30000 now we see our net income. Now we're going to look at the withdrawals and then that will give us our ending owner's capital. Now the reason why the statement of owner's equity is um, derived this way or set up this way is so that everybody will be able to see what we had as a beginning capital, any new investments by the owner, what came from the business itself, and then also what withdrawals were taken by the owner. So you get a very clear picture of what went on, what the owner was doing and investing and taking money out of the business as well as what the business itself was earning. Then we have all of the transactions that were uh, um, that affected our balance sheet so again all of our assets are on the balance sheet we have cash supplies and equipment we have our accounts payable and then our ending owners equity is also reflected and we have our total assets our total debits this, the debit side of the balance sheet or the accounting equation sorry debit side of the accounting equation um, this side here and, and then we have the credit side of the balance sheet or the accounting equation, um, all of the credit based uh, type of um, um, accounts, liabilities and owner's equity.